Hi hey guys, welcome back. So this video, obviously, by the title, you already know what I'm gonna talk about. And it's not something that's really exciting or happy and I'm not going to be happy. I'm not gonna be upbeat and try to put on this um, fake persona. Not that my other videos, I'm ever fake it. I'm genuinely, that's how I am. And I wanna be just as genuine with how I am right now. I don't want this to trigger any of you guys. I know some people have gone through similar situations and loss can be really triggering. Um, and I don't want you guys to feel like, oh, this is such a downer or whatnot. But you guys are my community and I wanted to update you on what's going on in my life. Um, especially because not only has it changed my whole entire world, um, but it has changed just my job and uh, YouTube and stuff for me and just being behind on posting and just kind of my desire to film and what I am filming and all of that stuff so I wanted to not only come on and update you on what's going on but also just kind of tell you what happens now um, for those of you who don't follow my Instagram and if you do I'm sure you're so tired of me hearing talking about this. Um, I posted three posts, but I I don't want you guys to be like, man, you just keep dragging on. Um, but my dad passed away almost two weeks ago. And I have filmed this video multiple times and I've started bawling in each and every one. So I'm trying really hard to just get through it this time it has been almost two weeks even though I think um, someone mentioned to me after he had just passed away like these next few days and weeks and even months are gonna feel so out of time um, it literally feels like time is just nonsensical at this point where everything just kind of melds together in this really weird way and that is such a good way to put it because it's been two weeks and it feels like it's been two days like but also it's been the longest two weeks it's just such a weird thing it's like time just changes everything everything changes and it's like you're looking at it um at a different perspective it's not linear anymore it's like just it's just so disorienting and weird um but uh it's been two weeks since he passed and it was unexpected my dad has struggled with health problems his whole life, my whole life, I should say. He was a Green Beret, Special Forces in Vietnam, and he was exposed to a chemical agent called Agent Orange, which basically was like a defense weapon used against him and other soldiers. Um, and it caused a lot of long-lasting health problems. A lot of people got cancer from it. A lot of people had t basically all the things my dad had. It, it was very debilitating and it was, it's progressive essentially. Like it continues to kind of deteriorate and cause more health effects. It bounces off on more health effects and it's just this vicious cycle my whole life he's had issues and he's been sick i mean that's not to say that he hasn't been active or that he hasn't had a job or that he hasn't been i mean he has he's been an, an amazing dad and he's been so present in my life but these last number of years um he has gone downhill with just his health and about four months ago he was diagnosed with heart failure the doctors though for whatever reason and i don't know if they wanted such a weird experience but i don't know if they were wanting to try to make it sound less because they were like we, we still don't want to use the term heart failure but we're gonna say it we don't think that's really what it is i don't know i don't know if my parents are just trying to guard my heart and try not for me to freak out because i struggle really severely with anxiety especially health anxiety um i don't know but all i know is that he got diagnosed with heart failure However, all of his doctors were incredibly optimistic and they were not concerned about it um, to the point where, you know, that he was going to have a much shorter lifespan or that he would die within, you know, four months like he did. Um, 
but it got really it progressed really fast and the doctors acted like it was first off let me just say if you feel like you aren't being heard or that when you're trying to advocate for yourself which you have to be your biggest advocate with your health and you feel like your doctors are kind of shooing you off like okay we're the professionals you're not which understandably so like that definitely is a thing especially with my health anxiety and i'm convinced i have every cancer under the sun i'm not a oncologist or any sort of medical doctor so i need to take their opinion of worth and value that i probably don't have cancer however if you do have an illness or you're incredibly concerned or you're super symptomatic or something and doctors and health care professionals are not taking you seriously you need to continue to advocate, advocate for yourself and find different doctors. We should have done that and we didn't. And I should have encouraged my dad as much as I tried to encourage him to do certain things, I should have encouraged him to find different doctors. But basically, he um, was progressing downwardly and he his quality of life had gotten pretty low because he um, heart failure causes a lot of fluid retention which causes problems with breathing and his blood pressure was really low dropping all the time and there was a lot of uh, like just symptoms of heart failure um, and his cardiologist decided that a pacemaker would be the best option and literally the pacemaker we thought would be like such a saving grace because every single person we talked to about a pacemaker either who had had one who had been you know, knew someone who had one, who was a doctor who had given one, what have you, was basically, it's like a second chance at life, like your whole life will change, things will change. And we were so confident, the doctors assured us that the surgery was so minor that I can't, they told us, I think that's like the second most common surgery in the United States. Um, so we were feeling really confident and the surgery went well, he was doing great, he came home, um, I saw him and he was finally pink with rosy cheeks, which he hadn't had in so long because of the fact of his heart failure and just how low his blood pressure was and how pale he was and the fact that blood just and oxygen just wasn't flowing around his body as much as it should. But he finally looked good and I had so much hope in that. And then, um, that Saturday night, he got his pacemaker on Friday, that Saturday night, he kind of, he collapsed at my parents' house, or his home with my mom, and my brother was there, and they called the EMT, and he was unresponsive for a couple minutes, um, like he fainted, and, but was still slightly awake, so they were concerned about a stroke, uh, but the time the EMTs had gotten there, he was totally fine, talking, acting totally normal, was able to get on the stretcher by himself, everything, and the EMTs were kind of like, why'd you call us? Um, when he got to the hospital, the doctors thought maybe it had just been dehydration, um, because with heart failure, you already have a lot of fluid retention, so you're supposed to cut down on your fluids, but he's also diabetic, so with diabetes, you lose a lot of fluid. Um, so they thought he was just really dehydrated and since he had had the surgery, maybe it just had taken effect on him um, and he was just weak. Um, they decided to keep him obviously for observation for a couple of days and they ran test after test after test after test after test and everything came back perfect like EKGs, CTs, blood panels after blood panels, random scans, like every single thing that they could think of to do was coming back just fine. Um, and then he did have a physical therapist there to try to make sure that they could prevent him from going to rehab because he had gotten kind of so weak. So she was, you know, getting him up every day and taking him and walking and everything. And, um, he was talking to my mom. She came in, they started walking and at one point he said he was feeling weak and he, he collapsed and he um, his blood pressure just dropped so low that his heart stopped beating. That's the only thing the doctors can think of. The pacemaker was working, I guess, perfectly. They've done everything they can do. They did so many things, and even the doctors are kind of concerned on what to put on his. 
death certificate because it still looks, they're like, we don't know what to put down for cause of death because he just kind of died. Um, we decided not to have an autopsy just because, uh, we didn't want to put him through that and it wouldn't have really changed much. We didn't really, we weren't concerned about malpractice or anything. Um, and wouldn't have brought him back to life. So, I'm a believer and my whole family is. He loved Jesus with all of his heart. So I have such hope that he's in eternal happiness in paradise and that we will be reunited one day. I went to church today and I felt so much peace so much hope, but grief, excuse me, sorry, grief is such a weird, weird, disorienting experience, and it's totally true when people say, like, you don't understand until you go through it, because it's like nothing I've ever experienced in my life, and I have lost people. I have lost friends and I have lost grand my grandparents and but losing your parent, someone you saw every single day, was a huge, huge part of your life. And then just being alive one minute to not is such a weird, weird experience. And it wasn't like he had cancer. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know my mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer a couple years ago. And that has been such a journey and such a, such a journey. But when you have cancer, there's like a, and you know, you're given a prognosis. There's kind of a resolution in some points where there's a preparedness. And typically you're allowed hospice and allowed to kind of prepare yourself and your loved ones to say goodbye. And not that I would ever want anybody to go through that. And I know that's not everybody's case. When someone dies so tragically and suddenly, it just feels so weird because it's like he had left his TV on at the house. You know, like there were things that were just there, like a dirty spoon because he had had pudding that night before they called 911. Like, it's such a weird, surreal thing for having someone so alive to so not and ceasing to be but i believe that he's in peace and i believe that he's in heaven and i believe that i will see him again through the grace of god and that is my personal truth for me and my beliefs as a christian and i know not everyone agrees with me on that but i would just ask that you respect me in that and not try we've already had people try to be kind of callous in that and just like well you know it's not really what happened but you can believe what you want it's it's hurtful <laughs> but um anyway long story short i just wanted to let you know what happened um for those of you who are on instagram who have been so kind to send me comments and messages and asking kind of what happened and everything because some of you knew that my mom was sick and had no idea about my dad i just want to give you kind of like the full synopsis i suppose um I have been so thankful for those of you who've commented and messaged me and sent prayers and offered to help or send money or what have you. Like, the amount of people who have been so kind has been astounding. And we have had such a community here. And I honestly feel like that is what these prayers have been helping when we've been pray praying for peace and comfort is god providing people to love on us and know that we are not alone and that there is a community and even though life seems like it's going on and we're not ready like there's still people to soften that blow and to grant us peace and um uh, anyway so as far as my channel goes um, I want to get back to filming. I want to get back to a routine because I think it would be healthy for me um, and my just family. Um, it's hard to have a desire to do something 
that used to bring so much joy because I feel so either numb or lacking of joy right now. It's hard to find joy in things because it seems so trivial, but I know that my dad would not want me to stop pursuing this. He was so proud of my dream for this and he got to see me reach 10,000 subscribers and he was so proud of me. And I don't want to stop. I love doing this, I do, and I know I will find joy in it again, and I know that this is meant to be something that I'm supposed to do, and so I'm going to continue to pursue it, but I just ask that you grant me some grace and some time. I may not be able to start going back to my two videos a week, or one video a week, or three videos, or what have you. Um, I'm going to try my best to have some sort of a schedule again, but um, I don't know how easy I'm going to jump into it. That also being said, I know such a big part of my content has been once for dinner videos, and I honestly, the like desire to cook is at a zero. And we've been so blessed to have people bring us so much food and meals for my family, um, but... That may change just in where I'm cooking because I think we'll be having, spending a lot of time with my mom in my parents' house. Um, and so I may be cooking over there and showing you meals from there. I may just be showing you different things. So I, I still plan to do my what's for dinners. I just, um, I don't have one going up right away <laughs> because I don't have any really think film for that right now. Um, and I do have a video that I was going to completely refilm because I filmed it and then literally after I pressed the um, record button to stop recording, my mom called and told me my dad had collapsed. I didn't get to say goodbye. I didn't, I have a lot of regret with a lot of that, but, um, I wasn't going to post that when I wanted to refilm it because I didn't want to watch myself knowing that you're about to get a call um, to tell you that your dad died. But I, I don't, I just decided I'm going to do it. I'm going to edit that video and post it. So I'm going to film a try on portion of that. I don't want to wait too long and refilm that whole thing and you guys not be able to get some of those items. So that should be, after this video, should be a try on haul. So if I seem really perky in that video, um, just know that I, I wasn't aware of anything at the time. So, um, but I did film that right before I got the call. So. I just want you to know, I don't want you to think, well, she's, she doesn't care or anything, I don't know. Um, but I do plan on doing like a day in the life soon for Halloween and shop with me's and soon it'll be Christmas time and a lot of holiday stuff and I'm excited still. I want to be excited. Um, I've got a lot of comments asking if I still plan on doing my what I got my kids for Christmas video and all of that and yes absolutely those videos are coming I plan on doing them um, they bring me a lot of joy and I will be doing those videos I also will be filming my what I got my five-year-old uh, for her birthday my fi my little my olive um, she's about to turn five in two weeks right after my dad's birthday um so, I will be filming that though for you guys because I think it's a good gift guide too for the holidays as well. So I will be filming that. So don't you worry, the gift guides will be happening again this year. And um, if you have any advice or any books that helped you, if you went through a loss similar to mine, um, or just if you want just to leave, you know, just advice what helped you I would love it um it has definitely been hard and I'm struggling um but each day is a new day that I have been blessed to live and I know God's not through with me and my dad wouldn't want me to wallow in grief and not 
continue to pursue light. So, if you have any advice, I would love it. And I'm pretty proud that I kept most of these tears in my eyes. <laughs> I have cried so much over the past two weeks that I feel like my body has just been almost like wrung out like a like a towel. Anyway, this video is so long. Thank you guys for making it to the end if you watched this whole thing, but I wanted to update you on what's going on. And um, I'm, I will be back. And I do plan on posting later this week that try on haul. So um, you will have content from me, but just give me grace, please, because it is a hard time and I'm scared. <laughs> But thank you for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.